use our brother to minister to us, talk to us in the area of our partners, talk to us in the area to deal gently with wisdom, with our partners. Oh Lord, the devil we pray that any of us, any area we are not living up to expectation, any area we are not up to date according to your word, any area that we are still saying, I am the head, I am the head, I am the head. Like he said, the pastor does not need to tell the church, I am the pastor. I am the pastor. If we are telling our partners that we are the end, an indication already that something is missing. Oh Lord, we pray that you revisit us again and take us to Calvary and make us better husbands than we have ever been in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> And the children that you have given us also, we have lifted them before you, before you this morning. We pray that as according to your promise concerning them, you say they will be brave. They will challenge the strangers at the gate. Oh, Lord, go and never whatsoever is hindering them, whatsoever is limiting them. Father, we pray that you destroy that thing and make them the promised children that they should be, oh, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for the program coming up. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for the young lad. Oh Lord, we pray that through this program you will bring multitude of them <laughs> into your kingdom, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And as I pray for your servant that is using day and night, laboring in his 80s over the church, over the families, over our children. Father, we pray that his grace will not diminish. His Amen. strength will not diminish. His anointing will not diminish. Rather, Amen. we go from grace to grace, strength to strength, anointing to anointing, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for those of us in the platform, and yet I see expecting, saying, Lord, when is our own testimony going to come? Like we had the testimony of our sister today, that she was just like the Hebrew woman, getting to the hospital, boom, she has delivered. Father, in heaven, we pray that you ask out them also speedily, that by next year, oh Lord, we will also celebrate namings with them, dedication with them, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, we commit our pastor, Pastor Mike, into your hands. Oh Lord, go now we pray. He has poured this out oh, before you this morning. Not before us, who oh, are we? We are just mere mortals. Oh Lord, he has told you the things that he needs in his family. He said he needs your visitation in the area of fruitfulness of the body, in the area of fruitfulness in the finance, in the area of progress in life, in the area of his families, that you want you, Lord, to visit his families, that those that are not converted, oh, that is the greatest miracle any man or any woman can have, that you have that miracle of conversion. Oh, Lord God in heaven, and in the area of his trying to travel, to look for greener pasture, oh, Lord, Father, we pray. Already we are hearing, that is the first testimony, that, ah, if you are still having issue, contact me later so that I can talk to somebody. Father, you, somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, you connect it to our brother that is our desire speedily will be met in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everything that the wicked one, the devil is doing to put barrier, not to make him very happy, working for you, laboring for you, praying day and night. Oh, Lord, go now we pray that everything that the devil has said, ah, this one, I will wait for you here. Yeah. Father, we pray you disappoint the devil and set our brother free and grant him his desire miracle in every aspect of life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for all our brothers, all our sisters in the platform. We pray that the testimony we are hearing from here and there will not cease. You continue to visit us. That we continue to you continue to put testimony in our mouths in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. As our leader has put December as a benchmark for us to check and see how far the Lord has dealt with us this year. Father, we pray that, that no family will be missing in the area of testimony at the end of this year, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank As you we Lord. continue today, going to walk, doing one thing or the other, we pray <laughs> that the present will continue with us. Thank Amen. you, Lord, for your entertainment. In Amen. Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, listen to the one of the...
program, the youth uh, listening to it, I think it was last week, and one of their educators said, and which I've seen all our leaders we have been praying for, that the way you are thirsting for food, that the way you are thirsting for water, that's the way you should be thirsting for success. Mm. That if you don't take a step in a day, ask yourself, what have I done? Uh, and I've been saying all our leaders by the power and the blood of every one of them have been taking steps. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, December will be a, 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 a what is it? A testimony that love for every one of us in Jesus' name. Our time has gone, and I know many of us have been so many. Let's share the grace together. The grace of the our grace Lord, of Jesus, our Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, the, the love, love of God, God and, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Thank you. God bless you all. Please, for Amen. many people that may be expecting me, please, um, I will get in touch. I will get in touch. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. of the word in Jesus name and the blessings of God will multiply in your life father we thank you for this hour thank you for this service thank you for your people here and everywhere we're asking oh Lord that revelation of your word will do good in every life in Jesus name and I pray that this revelation will wipe out every preconceived idea which is not according to your word in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that the blessing of your word, the blessing of the scriptures will all fill every heart and every life today in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to Matthew chapter 15. And in Matthew chapter 15, we're reading from verse 1. It says, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying in verse 2, why do that disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Verse 3, But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Here we find the conflict between the truth and tradition. Here we find the conflict 
between the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our Lord. Here we find the conflict between man and God. Between man, the hardened man, and the holy God. And we need to take a stand. And the Lord will be asking us, where do we stand? And in eternity, as you want to cross over to the other side, what will determine your eternal destiny and your eternal habitation is on which side did you stand when you were here on earth? Did you stand on the side of the traditions of the elders or do, did you stand on the truth revealed by Emmanuel God with us? We're looking at the message today, standing for redemptive truth against religious tradition. Standing, we have to stand somewhere, either for religious tradition or for redemptive truth. Standing for redemptive truth against religious tradition tradition we're dividing message to three parts number one the cause and the cost of religious tradition number two the consequence of corruption through rigid tradition number three true conversion and commitment to redemptive truth look at number one in number one the cause and cost of religious tradition look at mark chapter 7 reading from verse 3 for the pharisees and all the jews except they wash their hands out eat not holding the tradition of the elders they were not holding the recommendation of the doctors this is not about health care this is about religion it's about tradition it's about the conception of the scribes and the pharisees when you wash your hands on the recommendation of the doctors that's why gene that's for your health you don't want to catch disease and you don't want um, bacteria or any bad thing that look invisible to the natural eye but they're real and they can corrupt you and they can give you disease so on the doctor's recommendation on the basis of health they tell us to wash our hands you go to the restroom before you come out wash your hands in fact everywhere anywhere you go you wash your hands when you come back now in this pandemic of covid of the covid of a thing we're told to sanitize our hands that one recommendation of doctors because of your health but this one this one has nothing to do with the doctors this is the tradition of the elders and and it is not in the old covenant either you don't find it with moses or david or the prophets this is not the revelation of god this is the tradition of the elders it came in after the close of the old testament after malachi these pharisees rose up and they called themselves the protectors of the word of god and they had quite they added quite a lot to the word of god and they had these laws more than 600 laws that they compiled together and it became more significant to them than the word of God. The Pharisees and all the Jews influenced by those Pharisees, except they wash their hands off, that means often, they eat not holding the tradition of the elders. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it tells us, and when they come, 
from the market except the wash, the eat not, and many other things. I told you more than 600 things they compiled together. Many other things there be which they have received and to hold as the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and of tables even of tables look at verse 5 it says in verse 5 then the pharisees and the scribes asked him why walk not the disciples according to the tradition of the elders but eat bread with a washing hands in verse 6 verse 6 he answered and said unto them well, as Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, these people honoreth me with their leaves, but their heart is far from me. Verse 7, it says in verse 7, how be it in vain do they worship me. Those who hold the tradition of the elders, and they are not holding on to the doctrine of Christ. They worship in vain. Their worship might look beautiful and attractive and imposing, but all the same because they do not hold to the truth that brings salvation. They do not hold to the truth that brings sanctification. They do not hold to the truth that makes them serve sincerely. In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, not only one doctrine, all their doctrines as a kind of smear or snare of tradition, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. The commandments of men that are divergent from the commandments of God that the tradition they held and those traditions did not save them and then in verse 8 it says for laying aside the commandment of God you see what they have done the commandment of God that brings life eternal life saved life the commandment of God that brings righteousness into our lives. They laid that aside. Ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things. Ye do. Verse 9. And he said unto them, Full well, ye reject. They laid it aside. The commandment of God, and if anyone tries to bring back that commandment of God, they now reject. They say, no, we've laid it aside. We don't want the commandments of God. We don't want the revelation of God. Ye reject the commandment of God that she may keep your own tradition. Those two things cannot work together. And you have to reject one because before you can receive the other. If you receive the commandment of God, you reject the commandments of men. You shun the commandments of men. You lay aside the commandments of men and you hold on to the commandment of God. If you hold the tradition, the tradition of the elders, you cannot hold the commandment of God at the same time. You have to reject the commandment of God and lay that aside before you can give your heart and your mind and your life and your devotion to the commandment tradition of men. The cause and the cost of religious tradition. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the contradictory traditions against saving truth. Number two, the carnal transgressors against the Savior's teaching. Number three, the callous teachers with no submissive tenderness. Look at number one. Number one, the contradictory traditions against saving truth. As we look at Matthew chapter 15, reading from verse 2, it says, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? 
for they wash not their hands when they eat bread. And then in verse 3, Jesus now answered them and said unto them, Why? 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 The Pharisees asked why. And Jesus asked why. And it's still based on both tradition and truth. The disciples were standing on the truth and they rejected tradition. And the Pharisees said, why? The Pharisees were holding tradition and they rejected the truth. And Jesus asked, why? That question comes with you, wherever you stand, whatever you stand for, why? Saved, why? Holding on to God, why? Believing the truth and standing on the truth, why? Rejecting tradition, why? Holding on, whatever the temptation, whatever the pressure, whatever the pull, why? But if you backslide, why? If you reject God, why? If your mind, your heart is no more on the word of God that prepares us for heaven, why? If you have trampled under your feet the truth that saves and the truth that sanctifies, why? If you are no more having the power, the strength, the ability to stand for the truth against all odds, why? The question always comes, and then when we get to the gate of heaven, and the Lord looks at the records, and you see the record that you were once in the truth. You deviated from the truth, and you backslid, and you didn't come back before you died. The question will be why? And after the why, where? Where will you spend eternity? If you trust, if you depend, if you hold on to the traditions of the elders, to the traditions of men, and you kick off, away from your life the word and the truth of god that saves why but she answered and said unto them why do ye also transgress the commandment of god by your tradition it tells us in colossians chapter 2 reading from verse 8 colossians chapter 2 verse 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. Traditions of men spoil your life. They destroy your life. They destroy your confidence in the Lord and your faith in the Lord. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. For everyone, all that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But the tradition of men will make you to forsake that path of faith and the power of faith cannot work in your life anymore because now you are just for tradition and not for the truth. It says, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and being deceived after the tradition of men. After the tradition of men. After the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world, not after Christ. Any philosophy, any idea, any opinion, any policy, anything from the world, from the wise men of the world, from the proverbs of the world, from the precepts of the world, from the authors and authorities of the world that makes you deviate from Christ, leave Christ, oppose Christ, and remove the commandment of Christ from your life, 
that is the tradition of men, the tradition of the elders. Now, we need to look at that word tradition. If you go to the dictionary and find out tradition, tradition is a neutral word. It's just like you have a standard, a policy, a doctrine, an idea by which you are guided and ruled. And that neutral word, tradition, if it's the tradition, the teaching of the elders that makes you go away from the Lord, that is bad. That is evil. If it is um, a tradition, a kind of proposal, a kind of emphasis that makes you to reject and to neglect the commandments of God, that is evil. But if it is the word of God given to you, that replaces all the ideologies of the world in your life, then it's a good thing. Look at Paul's uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 15. In Second Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 15, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or our epistle, the word that the apostles brought to us when Jesus said, teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then it says, lo, I am with you until the end of the world. The traditions taught by word or by our epistles all the word of god about christ about salvation about righteousness about holiness without which no man shall see the lord that we read in the epistles it's also referred to as tradition and it says brethren stand fast hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by the word or by our epistles hold it fast don't negate that don't push that away jesus said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature don't only stay in jerusalem don't only stay at the headquarters go ye into all the world now if we're to go into all the world we must send out people from the headquarters who we'll say that there is a need in the north please go there there's a need outside nigeria be the overseer there there is a need outside africa go and be the overseer there that looks like tradition yes yes that's the word of the lord hold on to that tradition that we keep on sending people out from the headquarters and we're sending them to places where the need of the preaching of the gospel is is by the word of Christ it's by the teaching of Christ and we now hold on to that it's even in the epistles separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work have appointed for them Acts chapter 13 verse 2 and all through verse 4 that appears to be tradition that you know they take people from here and they send them there they send them they send them and they remove them from our district from our locality why are they doing that why should we obey that are we following the tradition of men now hold fast to that kind of tradition that you have been taught whether by word or by our epistle now, Paul the Apostle, our times has said, I tell you this, this is not directly from the Lord, but revealed by the Spirit of God, unto, and I think I have the mind of Christ. 
What do you mean? He says, those who are not married, it were better they stay as I. But not, that's not what God said. But this is what the Spirit of God is saying through me. Tradition, yes, that an 80-year-old man should not marry a 40-year-old woman. Where did you see that? Show me the verse, show me the chapter. It's not in any chapter, it's not in any verse. The idea is if an 80-year-old man marries a 40-year-old lady, that man, 80 years of age, might die at 85, might die at 90. And the woman, after marrying for 10 years, becomes a widow. And so we say, look ahead. Because Jesus said, who is going to build a house that he will not count the cost? And look at the future. When you're going to marry, you have to look at the future. You say that's tradition? Yes, by the Spirit of God. That a person that has HIV, another one has HIV, who will build a home or a house and not look at the future that they don't produce a child, sickly child that will have HIV. Show me the chapter and show me the verse. There's no chapter, there is no verse because HIV was not in the world at that time it only tells you that if you are a normal person you cannot marry a leper because leprosy was in the world at that time and uh, the leper will be separated away from the camp and so since the man that is um, he that is holy and healthy cannot marry the woman that has the leprosy will say the same thing that contagious diseases will bring more problems in your life that's the reason why all these traditions are there but they are based on the leading of the spirit of god and therefore when we talk about tradition a tradition is so not not all negative therefore brethren stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or by our epistle. Look at chapter 3, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6, now we command you, brethren, these are brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, not after the tradition which he received of us. Us apostles, us your leaders, we gave you this tradition, this truth, the truth that says their own is not the tradition of the elders. This is not for his sake. This is to save and to secure and to keep us in the kingdom of God. So look at all those people that will flout, that will, dis that will disobey the traditions who have said, Apostle, what tradition is this? That whosoever will not work, let him not eat. Show me where Christ said that. He told us that when the Spirit is come, it will guide you into all truth. It says many things I have which I have not told you yet. But when the Spirit is come, it will guide you into all truth. And that's where that came from. That the Holy Spirit now will guide them and they'll be able to guide the church. So that's the reason why he told them, watch and see if there is any man, any woman that will say, I don't respect those leaders, I don't accept those leaders, all that is tradition, 
and he classifies the apostles who are saved sanctified and filled with the holy ghost he classifies them with the pharisees who are not born again and so we need to understand when we see the word tradition and understand what tradition is that is it from pharisees is it from is spirit led is spirit taught is spirit guided man of god the leader in the church it tells us beware of the traditions against saving truth in titus chapter one i'm reading from verse 14 titus chapter one we're looking at verse 14 not giving heed to jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth verse 16 in verse 16 they profess that they know god but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient unto every good work reprobate look at number two here number two here canal transgressors against the savior's teaching welcome to matthew chapter 15 reading from verse 3 but he answered and said unto them why do ye also transgress the commandment of god by your tradition why do you also transgress the commandment of god the revelation of god by your tradition verse 4 in verse 4 it says for god commanded saying honor your father thy father and mother and he that cursed father or mother let him die the death in verse 5 but ye say whosoever shall say to his father or his mother it's a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. In verse 6, it says, And honor not his father or his mother. He shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of known effect by your tradition the tradition that contradicts the word of god that teaches people against the scriptures against the savior's teaching and these pharisees were not the only guilty people there are people today who also are guilty of this the lord in his word says honor your father and then the teacher in the school will teach the children that this is the age of freedom, age of liberty. And if your father says anything, be bold. Look at your father face to face and tell him, and look at mommy face to face and tell her, that's old school. That's old idea. We younger generation, we don't do that anymore. On which basis? Don't you do that anymore? On the basis of what our teacher said. On the basis of what the hero I see on the billboard. What that hero says, that we are free and we're free from any hold of a father of a mother the people that taught you that they make you reject the commandment of god to hold on to the ideas of men that's exactly what those pharisees did and if there's anyone in the church that says we are the one now in command your father says don't do that don't listen to him your mommy says don't do don't listen to her we are the younger generation and we tell you that this is the way to go 
if they have that authority on you you have lost the authority of the scriptures and the Pharisees are there to tell you that what the word of God had said that now these present day Pharisees they know better and they tell you that honoring your father honoring your mother that that doesn't come into this understanding of how to live there's another thing look at hebrews chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 7 hebrews chapter 13 reading from verse 7 remember them that have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of god whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation it says remember them which have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of god whose faith follow look at verse 17 in verse 17 it tells us it tells us obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not to agree for that is unprofitable for you it says obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves is telling us to respect and to honor the teachers of the world those who teach us the way of salvation and the way of holiness and the way of sanctification those who tell us and teach us from the word of god how to get ready and remain in the lord and get to heaven now there are people who teach our members today and they teach our workers and they teach our leaders they say not necessary to obey the pastor the leader who has the rule over us they say nobody has any rule we're all equal fathers and children all equal ministers and members all equal and the apostles and the assembly all equal and so they will teach the members they say if we all do it and we carry the posture of disobedience and the posture of rebellion the man over there will understand we do not obey any leader anymore what we think is good we do and he doesn't know any better what does he know that we don't know and where has he gone we have not gone so we don't respect or not obey anyone anymore those are the pharisees and those are the people that make members of the church to reject the word of god and then to establish their own tradition but the word of god is still the same the word of god has not changed obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for the watch for your souls and if they're watching for your souls there are times you'll say that's not right repent of that that way is not good at the way of perdition come back from that but the Pharisees that come into our congregation and they may even call themselves workers and leaders or fathers or mothers and they teach a people not to be obedient to leadership in the kingdom of God in the word of God those are the Pharisees that are trying to take heaven away from you I pray nobody will take heaven away from you obey them 
obey them. Uh, not only the general superintendent, of course, you ought to obey him. All our pastors, the local pastor there, who is helping you to go the way of righteousness, obey them. And when we, you know, if you are selected to come and, you know, do anything in the service of the Lord, this is what the pastor said, this is what the GS said, and this is the way to go. If anybody teaches you behind and says, don't go the way of the GS of the pastor, we are taking over from him. Now, those people appoint themselves as leaders, but God has not appointed them Absalom. And so if they tell you, do it this way and do it that way, whoever they are, whatever authority they claim, they are not of God. They are the Pharisees that tell you to do things and to say things that are not according to the word of God. Obey them, we will obey. Let me hear you. Amen. You know, that makes the word of God and the work of God easy. Because then we can say, we have a need in uh, Nasarawa State. We have a need in Kaduna State. We have a need in Bauchi State. And then we we'll say, please go there. And there's no argument. We're able to do that because we're obeying the scriptures. If anyone, then we'll say, ah, uh, ah. Uh. As in the olden days, no, it's Bible day. The Bible time that was still to obey the word of God. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for the watch over your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. We're looking at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. In 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8, but if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith. He is worse than an infidel. What the Pharisees did in convincing the people, the Jews, not to take care of their families, but everything they would have used in taking care of their families, they have already given and laid on the altar. It made those people that listen to them worse than an infidel. When there's a contrary idea, a contrary tradition that tells you not to obey the word of God, but to go your own way, they make you worse than an infidel. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 15, it tells us, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, one follower, one disciple, and one traditionalist. And when he is made, he make him to fold more the child of hell than yourselves. You make him the people they influence. They influence them to become worse than the world. They make them to be more sinners than they were. They make their hearts harder than their hearts were. It says they make them to fold more the child of hell than themselves. In verse 33, in verse 33, it says, Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape? The damnation of hell. We come to number three. Number three here, the callous teachers with no submissive tenderness. Callous. The heart seared with a hot iron. Matthew chapter 12, chapter 15, <coughs> verse 12. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 12, then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest 
thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Christ did not come to curry the favor of sinners. He came to convert them. Christ did not come to campaign before the Jewish people to lift him up. He was already lifted up. And if you are going to, if you are looking for position, if you are looking for anything from the sky, from the Pharisees, you will not want to offend them. You will not want to say anything contrary to what they already know. And they knew nothing. They didn't know anything of salvation. They didn't know anything of sanctification. They didn't know anything of the righteousness that will lead us to heaven. And if you don't say anything that is different from what they have said, you'll never preach the word of salvation. And you'll never preach the word of sanctification and holiness. You'll never preach blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And so he gave the people the word. And the Pharisees were always there. And so if he was avoiding the Pharisees, I can't say that the Pharisees are there. I can't say that the, the scribes are there. I can't say that the Sadducees are there. He'll never say the truth because wherever Jesus was, all these Pharisees will come from wherever they are to Jerusalem and to wherever he was preaching. The same thing with us preachers of today. If we're going to follow Christ, we can't say uh, these people are there. I can't say that. And those people, they're watching for my words. And if I say anything contrary to what tradition they have laid down, then uh, it's not going to make them happy. Then we're not going to preach repentance. We're not going to preach salvation. We're going, not going to lead anyone to heaven. Whoever is offended, whoever is not offended, we will preach the truth. You will preach the truth. And you will stand for the truth in Jesus' name. Then came his disciples. You remember those disciples themselves? They were still having the fear of men. Until Jesus died, until Jesus rose from the dead, they locked up themselves for the fear of the Jews. And so, led to those disciples alone, they wouldn't say that. And they said, Jesus, look at what you have done. Do you know that the Pharisees are offended after they heard the saying? What did uh, Jesus say? Did Jesus say, oh, is that so? I didn't mean to offend them. What did I say that offended them? This one that you said they should trample the traditions of men under their feet and lift high the standard of the saving truth of the commandment of God. Okay, that's what offended them. And then Jesus will go back and say, Pharisees, I'm sorry. I heard that you are offended. Did he do that? I can't hear you. No. When somebody preaches the word of repentance and the word of salvation and the word of holiness to take people to heaven, and then he learns that there are some people, Pharisees and scribes, that were offended and they had a confederacy, conspiracy, that because he said that, was shut him up. And then somebody comes to inform you, do you know that people are offended by your straight forward message that the tradition of man, any man, that that tradition will lead to hell, that they need to put that on the feet and take the commandment of God that will lead us to heaven. Do you know they are offended if the preacher comes back 
He may not say directly, I'm sorry, but if he tries to ameliorate, if he tries to tone down the word of God and says, actually, God loves everybody and uh, this is an age of love and whatever we're doing, uh, God accepts everyone. He has negated the word of God, yeah, the fear of man, and I doubt if that preacher does not repent whether he will get to heaven. I pray we'll all get to heaven. Look at verse 13. Verse 13 says, but he answered and said, every plant, every Pharisee, every Sadducee, every scribe, every idea, every tradition, every opinion, every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up, rooted out thrown away and thrown into the fire. Give me a good amen. amen. Then he says in verse 14, let them alone. How did you get so near the Pharisees? You knew they were offended. Stay away from their camp. Let them alone. Who came? Who is the link between you and the Pharisees that came to tell you and you are telling me that the Pharisees were offended at this saying, let them alone. How did you have their number? How did you contact them? And what's the association between you and them? You hear my word and you know that that will lead you to life eternal. That's enough for you. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. You understand? I said you understand that ditch is hell fire. If the blind lead the blind, both the blind leading and the blind who are led will fall into the ditch. Explain that. If the preacher is influenced by the Pharisees and they are blind, if the preacher is afraid of the Pharisees and they are blind, if the Pharisees will only accept approval of the preacher who says only what they want us to say, they are blind, will become blind. If the Pharisees are leading and controlling the preachers, then the Pharisees and the preachers being controlled by them will fall into the ditch. And if the preacher, the pastor, the teacher, who is now totally influenced by the fear of the Pharisees, but is still keeping on as the leader, but he has become blind because of the influence and the fear of Pharisees. He now leading the blind, the preacher, and the people will fall into the ditch, into the ditch, and fall into hell. We well, will not get to hell. The eyes of the preacher will remain bright and seeing. The revelation of the preacher will not be deemed and the spiritual eyes of the preacher will never become blind. Give me a good amen. And then uh, the people who hear, when uh, the preacher is saved and sanctified and steadfast in the word of the Lord, not cringing, not coward, not conquered by the influence of the Pharisees and remains on the word of God, then uh, there is salvation for everyone and your salvation will abide in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three. Number two, point number two, the consequence of corruption through rigid tradition. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, the hypocrites corrupted 
by inflexible traditions. Number two, has cauterized. Cauterized means hardened, blinded, and without any feeling, no tenderness. Hearts cauterized by influential traditionalists. And number three, heaven closed against incorrigible transgressors. Look at number one, hypocrites corrupted by inflexible traditions. We're looking at Matthew chapter 23, reading from verse 25. What you want you, scribes, and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Verse 28, in verse 28, even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. That was their lifestyle. Their hypocrisy had corrupted them. They are standing for a tradition in an inflexible manner. They were like that. Some time ago, they're still like that today. That they are in flexible, unchanging, incorrigible in their tradition. In, in Mark chapter 7 verse 13, Mark chapter 7 verse 13, making the word of God of known effect through your tradition. Making the word of God. Have you noticed how Jesus preached? faithfully and he preached the word of salvation and those policies were always there to hear but they never repented the lord spoke to them directly and he will mention them ye hypocrites ye pharisees they never repented and they influenced all the jews under their control not to repent and if anyone repented, they'll throw him out of the synagogue, throw him out of the temple. Now, what have they gained until today, 2022, 24th century? If you go to Israel, the majority of those people, citizens over there, they still do not accept Christ accept his salvation accept his word they, are, they still do not accept him as their messiah because the traditions of the pharisees went on from generation to generation that's the danger of tradition that the tradition does not stop with those who are perpetrating the traditions now after their death, they've got enough disciples, followers in the church that will perpetrate that same tradition. And after the death of that generation, they have enough followers that will still perpetrate the same thing. I pray that God will root out, flush out, crush, send away all those inflexible, incorrigible Pharisees that are not there for the salvation of the people, but they are there for the tradition they hold. I pray they will not influence you in Jesus' name. Making the word of God of non effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such things ye do. Verse 21. In verse 21, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders. By the way, the Pharisees never mentioned anything like that. 
for them evil thoughts not their concern adulteries not their concerns fornications not their concern murders not their concern washing hands washing pots washing utensils washing table the thing that does not take anyone to heaven that was their concern the tradition of the elders but for people repenting of evil thoughts repenting of adulteries repenting of fornications repenting of murders in verse 22 it says in verse 22 thefts covetousness wickedness deceit lasciviousness and evil eye blasphemy pride foolishness in verse 23 all these evil things come from within and defile the man the pharisees were not concerned about cleansing about washing about forgiveness about remission of sin all that concerns them washing hands before you eat outward righteousness and the inward righteousness that makes us free free from sin all that was not their concern i pray we will not be like that look at uh, second timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 7 in second timothy chapter 3 verse 7 ever learning always listening to the message of christ ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth and then in verse 8 it says in verse 8 now as janice and jambres was should moses so do these also receive the truth? Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Let's look at number two here. Number two, hearts hardened, seared, cauterized by influential traditionalists. It says in uh, Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 15. Uh, for this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, or and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted they didn't want to be converted they didn't want to change they loved their position as perpetrators of tradition and they didn't want to give that up it says they wouldn't listen lest they should see with their eyes lest they should hear with their ears and lest they should understand with their heart and shall be converted and, uh, and that I should heal them. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith. I will not depart from the faith. You will not depart from the faith. Listening to those traditional Pharisees can make a person depart from the faith. And looking at tradition, appreciating outward righteousness and the tradition and abandoning the truth can make somebody depart from the faith being afraid of the reaction of the anger of the pharisees that have already had total control absolute control on somebody's mind and being afraid of those pharisees traditionalists can make somebody depart from the faith and you just become confused and then tired and you're weary and you say how long will i will i continue combating this and contending with this and once you are tired you throw off your arms and you say there's no point i'm tired you will not be tired as long as there's one sinner 
to be saved as long as there is one sinner to lead to repentance in your community you will not be tired in jesus name as long as it is true that we need to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord you'll not be tired of holiness in jesus name it's when somebody gets tired it departs from the faith and the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and then in verse 2 in verse 2 speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron having the conscience seared with a hot iron that the conscience is now callous cauterized hardened and truth cannot penetrate anymore and it's done because of the influence of traditionalists look at number three here number three here heaven closed against incorrupt incorrigible transgressors heaven closed against them matthew chapter 5 verse 20 in matthew chapter 5 verse 20 and I, for i say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees ye shall in no wise in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven the pharisees by their being incorrigible inconvertible unconvertible that the word of god does not reach them to convert them they will not inherit the kingdom of god matthew chapter 7 verse 21 in matthew chapter 7 verse 21 not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. Somebody just professing is my Lord, but his life is not touched. Is my Lord, his life is not transformed. He is my Lord, but there is no conversion. It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Jesus Christ came to show us how to do the will of the father from the heart but the pharisees were opposed to that their heart was not in obeying the will and the word of god their heart was for their tradition and it says all those who are not doing the will of god from their heart they will not get to heaven and so those people closed heaven against themselves because they were incorrigible transgressors we're looking at verse 22 here verse 22 many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name have done many wonderful works there are people who neglect their salvation and they run after casting out devils healing the sick and prophesying there are people who are looking for the supernatural but they're not looking for salvation and there are people who are joyful and happy the sick is getting healed and demons are being cast out and they give more attention and more love and they give more of their devotion to that heal the sick heal the sick heal the sick 
but lose the soul they lose their own souls and they lose the souls of the people they are trying to get over and their preoccupation is jesus heals have you had that testimony have you had that testimony have you had that testimony and in pursuit in the pursuit of healing and casting out devils deliverance we leave salvation behind and people are no more interested in salvation in righteousness in holiness in living a transparent life a holy life the thing they exalt in their mind and the thing they are looking for they're inviting people he will heal you he will deliver you he will you know put you know money into your pocket he will do this and that but to be saved and to live a life that is free from sin all that is not their emphasis now many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have we not cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works in verse 23 and then will i profess unto them when it will be too late for them to repent they're ready at the gate and they're saying lord open to us we did this your name and that in your name and at that late hour when the man cannot repent anymore when the pharisee when the sadducee when the people who have been influenced by religion by tradition when they cannot repent anymore when all the things they have concentrated on in the church of the living god when all those things could not save them anymore then when i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity depart from me i never knew you all the time you are you know going here going there running here running there and you didn't take care of the salvation of your soul and all you wanted is the spectacular the supernatural the healing the deliverance so that they'll be talking about that everywhere prophet so and so evangelist so and so look at what is happening and then uh, salvation is gone uh, and the standard of the doctrine of the word of god is done and no place is given to the holiness without which no man shall see the lord then uh, will i profess unto them uh, i never 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 knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity i pray that will not be your lord I said that will not be your Lord, and then that will not be my Lord. Amen. Going about, it's going to go about if we preach what Christ commanded us to preach. That will preach the gospel, the gospel of salvation, the gospel of transformation, the gospel of a changed life the gospel that prepares people for heaven if that's what we're doing going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature not just healing not just deliverance not just miracle the gospel of a changed life i pray that gospel will never depart from us will never depart from you that your mind, your heart, your devotion will remain in the gospel that Jesus preached. And telling the truth, telling the truth everywhere. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children. I was talking to his own disciples. Can you say that you have become converted? Can you say in all sincerity, looking at the condition of your heart, looking at your disposition, looking at the influence of your life, can you say that 
you are converted, you have become as a little child. A little child humble, a little child tender, a little child willing to learn, a little child willing to follow, as a little child willing to follow the way of the Lord, or you as proud and pompous as the traditional Pharisees that will not learn anything from anyone. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I pray the door of heaven will not be closed against any of us in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, true conversion and commitment to redemptive truth. True conversion and commitment to redemptive truth. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the conversion from past and present traditions. Number two, total commitment to permanent and purifying truth. Number three, tender conscience for purposeful and profitable teachableness. Number one, number one, true conversion from past and present traditions. Acts chapter six, verse seven. It says, and the word of God increased and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. The priests who were of the class, the assembly of the Sanhedrin, of the Pharisees, of the Sadducees, these people eventually thought about it, and it says many, many a great company of the priests and the parish of the priests were obedient to the faith galatians chapter 1 reading from verse 14 in galatians chapter 1 verse 14 and profited in the jewish religion above many my equals in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. That's Paul. He was Saul. He was into Phariseeism. But now, when the Lord called him, he thought about it. Why would you waste your life? Why would you waste your skill on tradition? And he said he profited, he was zealous of the tradition of the elders, his fathers. In verse 15, it says, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, called me by his grace. Here was somebody who had appeared to be incorrigible and inflexible in a tradition. But now he had the call of God as Christ appeared unto him. And the Lord called him by his grace. In verse 16, he said, to reveal his son in me. He fought against Christ, against the Son of God, against our Lord and Savior in the past. But now the call of God came to him through that same Jesus and it says, he's to reveal the Son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I confide not for flesh and blood. I pray that same mind to repent fully and to commit yourself fully unto the Lord and the word of the Lord. The Lord will give to every one of us in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two here is total commitment to the permanent purifying truth. The truth 
that Christ emphasized the truth that he passed on to the apostles and he gave to us in the epistles. That's the truth, permanent truth. That's the truth, purifying truth. And we commit ourselves to that permanent, purifying truth. It tells us in Mark chapter 12, verse 13, And this saint unto him certain of the Pharisees and the Herodians to catch him in his word. Look at that. To catch him, they were waiting for something. Every time there was opportunity for Christ to preach, and they, they will always come. They will, they will come not to be converted, not to be transformed, not to have a change of life, not to get saved, and not to get to heaven, but to catch him in his words anyone like that today who comes to church not to repent not to be converted not to be transformed by the truth anyone like that today who only comes to catch the preacher in his word so that we'll have a reason to oppose him a reason to criticize him. A reason to cut him down. Those people are like the Pharisees. Those Pharisees did not get to heaven. Their hearts were not affected by the words of Christ because their purpose of coming was to catch him in his words. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, 